This week in post, finding dust spots in Photo Raw, and working with glow filters. It's a Q&A episode. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In Post. Today's a Q&A episode, gotten questions from a bunch of folks. They've gotten the answers, but there are a few I thought we'd share here today so uh, everybody can learn a little more about photo processing. If you've got questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website, comments on the blog, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and a bunch of places. However you would like to get a hold of me, it would be great and hope you send something in. So let's get to our first question. First question is from Horst. He asks, I'm using Photo Raw, and what ways can I find and fix dust spots? So, uh, of course, there's a couple of ways we can do this, and it's best just to take a look at them directly. So we've got this photo here, and you can see, turn on the little cursor there, we've got some dust spots that are pretty obvious right up here that I can see straight away. And so those are, those are easy to find, but what can we do to find more of them? So uh, you may be a Lightroom user, which has this uh, visualize spots in the tools for you know, correcting the spots. We don't have that in Photo Raw, but we can simulate it really easily. There's a couple of ways. So the first thing we can do is we can take the haze slider and crank it up and down. If I bring it all the way down and cut the haze way too much, I start to see more spots that I didn't see before. And so those are all great. I can see those things and I can grab the eraser and size my brush accordingly and start to fix those guys, right? So. I'm a little bit too aggressive. Wait for that tool to catch up. There we go. So I can go through that and do all those things there. Now there's also another way to do it as well. And this one actually a little more closely resembles what Lightroom is doing under the covers. So if for whatever reason, this haze slider option doesn't cut it for you. Uh, first thing we'll do is we're gonna take the saturation and bring it all the way down. So this is just black and white. And that's really so that the next step is easier on our eyes. So let me hide tone and color and I'm going to add a curves adjustment. And I'm going to create this insanely wild curve. So I'm just going up and down in a really, really tight sine wave, right, to get this, let's go grab that point there, to get this thing into a, what's called a solarizing curve. All right, so a couple more points just to illustrate it. So something like that, and bring this all the way up. All right, so we see that. And now when I go in here and I can, again, start playing with haze sliders and things, you notice like these spots up in the upper right corner, as I start manipulating that haze slider, I'm seeing them appear differently, right? So this is another mechanism that we can use to start to root out those sometimes tough to find dust spots. So summarizing it, use the haze slider for sure. And if that's not gonna cut it, go ahead into curves and create one of these crazy solarizing curves. And again, I'll recommend that you take your saturation down to zero so you're only looking at black and white. Otherwise, these colors, <laughs> there are chances that they're gonna burn your retinas out of your eyes. Got one other question today from Steve and he asks about glow filters and what's the benefit of adding them and don't they you know, kind of combat and fight against adding contrast? Uh, so Steve, the answer to that question, the second part is yes, uh, glow will take away contrast because glow tends to make things softer. But, you know, what are the benefits? It's really driven by what type of mood you wanna get out of the scene. Let's keep working with this same photo. So I added a preset to this and open up the shadows a little bit. And this is nice, it's a little dreamy and airy. Let's go ahead and add a glow filter, okay? And let's choose Oh, people love Orton, so let's go Orton clean, okay? Now, this really just killed the, the contrast and the greens and so forth that were in that foreground area. So certainly, you know, if I have no effect at all, and as I start to bring that up, I start to lose things. So it is a balancing game about not going so far with the glow and losing contrast, where on one shines is these blending options underneath this you know, little gear menu here. I can use these to protect some of the shadows. Let me crank this all the way up. So I'm protecting all the shadow areas. So this glow right now is zero. And as I raise it up, there's not too much being affected in the foreground. And I can also even protect some of my midtones, right? And so 
I can work this way, and this is without any masking. If that's not cutting for me, you know, I can take that down. I can add a mask, B for the brush key, and I can paint away, you know, the area that's here just to get rid of glow from this spot. And I'm going to do a sloppy mask, and I have the, the uh, perfect brush turned on so I can get some good edge detection just to avoid having any glow in that area. Take shadows back down. Now as I crank this up and down, you can see that those foreground elements don't change at all. But the middle of the scene is getting really cool looking. It's really nice. It's changing the mood and it's making it a you know, very dreamy sky, right? And even the, uh, the misty water is getting kind of nice too. So for this one, I probably need to do a little more masking on some of those foreground rocks so that I don't lose the detail where I want to have detail. So with glow filters, yeah, you are going to do a balancing act between contrast detail and that soft glow feeling. And with, at least with Photo Raw, the good way to combat that is the protect sliders in blending options, or you can do masking. And if you've got other tools that you're using too, Aurora HDR, Photoshop, masking tools are all there. And you can just do your, your protection by removing the effect from things that you don't want to get too soft and glowy. Well, that's all for this week in post. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, share this with a friend, tell your local camera club, tell your photo buddy, anything to get the word out on the show, would appreciate it. Social shares are always appreciated. And if you've got questions, again, hit me up, contact me directly through my website. You'll get an answer in a day or two, and maybe your question will be featured on another episode of In Post. Until next time, my name's Scott Davenport, and happy shooting. One other question. <clears throat> hmm.